Oh boy. Let's talk about elevator game. I'm, uh, I'm about to blow Kaylee's mind right now because she doesn't know this piece of information. And you're going to see her whole demeanor change right now. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Look how like happy and like with it she is right now. This is brought to us from the same director as Glorious. <laughs> what? Yep. Is that is that mind blowing to you? Yeah, I really loved Glorious. Yes, you did. Yes, A you did. A lot. Yep. This is the same director. Can you believe that? Whoa. Right? It's not the same writer though. I didn't look into that. I just saw the director was Glorious and I was like, that can't be true. But it is. So I will <laughs> say like, this movie sucks. <laughs> Terribly. But I actually thought that there was a couple scenes that were pretty okay, like, and effective. This is, this is a review that I'll call, like, cherry picks, not it's, nitpicks. Yeah. Like, I'll cherry pick a couple things. Like, there are, like, one or two things, two-ish, that I would be like, okay, that was kind of, that was cool. Right. That was cool. For maybe a cumulative amount of like 10 seconds, 20 yeah. seconds, the whole rest of the film is trash. So that's not nitpicks. That is complete, just a dismantling of, of how poor this film is. But before we get into that, let's just talk about the plot really quick and uh, whatnot. So this is about a girl who plays the elevator game. If you're not familiar with the elevator game, it is a game where you go in an elevator mm -hmm. and you press. Uh, well, don't, yeah, just some... You press some buttons, yeah. you press different <laughs> floors, yeah. and a woman's supposed to come on at a certain floor, and you're not supposed to look at her, you're not supposed to talk to her, and if you don't do that, then you go into this, like, alternate dimension. Yeah. Right. So, this is some, like, internet, urban legend kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and the first time I had ever seen this covered was in a show called Evil, which we watched. I think it's in season two. Uh, which I love. Yeah. That show is great, and that episode is really cool. So definitely heavily recommend that show and that episode for sure if you want to see this done way, 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 way better. Um, but this concept is like, oh, cool. I like these you know, urban legend um, internet things, like cryptids and whatnot. Uh, the, what are they? The, the Creepypastas. Creepypastas. Like, I love that kind of stuff when, mm -hmm. when done correctly and done, and done effectively. So... I was super interested in this. So the girl plays it, she goes missing, and then we follow this group of social media influencers who go and play creepy games online for their followers. And of course it's brought to their attention of this game by some new recruit for their for their team. And so they go, they play, and things go bad. Yeah. Um so I think I think the the first thing or the main thing to discuss when it comes to this film is how childish the movie feels. Yeah. Like it genuinely feels like it was made for the Disney Channel if the Disney Channel threw in random F words. Yeah. I do think that that is primarily the writing and the acting. Um, it's the direction too, and the direction for when they're when it's with the like gang, like the the people, the core. It it feels very Disney Channel, and it's really like off putting. Yes, because I don't like when you ask like who's this movie supposed to be appealing to, I and I no idea. Guess like a younger audience, despite the fact that there's like the you know, the F word and some gory stuff and like talk about like, like sexual assault in a way and, and whatnot. But I don't know. I just, I thought it, that the uh, actors did a, not a great job with their roles, which is a bummer. And I hate saying that <laughs> yeah. I always feel like really bad, but I just didn't like the chemistry between any of them. I didn't I didn't buy into it. Like there's one guy that's supposed to be this like cocky asshole and like he was an asshole, but it just felt so 
fake, fake and, and yeah, yeah, very forced. And like he was really trying to like sell this like that he's crazy, and it just was not landing at all. Um, so yeah, all of it was really awkward and not great. And the tone of it is, as we've said, very Disney Channel, which is super off-putting. Yeah, I, I just I genuinely don't understand who this is made for. I, I because when it originally okay, so the opening feels like a typical normal horror movie cold open. Yeah. That I was like, okay, because a lot of people were shitting on this. Yeah. And then that opening happened and I was like, that felt fine. That felt very normal standard horror fare. Is this yeah. just gonna be a very fine, okay movie that people are shitting on? And then Literally, as soon as that scene's over and we go into our main plot line, the within five seconds, I was like, "Why does this feel like a kids' movie all or like a yeah, yeah like a like a made for TV kids' movie all of a sudden? Yeah. This is weird." Hmm. And then they pulled away from that, right? Because that's like a movie within a movie kind of thing. Because yes. they're like watching the footage. And so I thought from there, like when they pulled back, I was like, oh, they're they're just kind of like poking fun right. at, you know, the social media generation and, and how hammed up it is and, and, and that it's for, you know, art, that they're marketing it for children because YouTube, you know, you, you, it's hard to, um, it's hard to go after adult audiences like YouTube. A lot of like really famous YouTubers have to make very family friendly content to, yeah. to remain big. So I thought they were going to say something about that. But no, when they pulled out of that, it remains that silly. It, does. it remains that childish. And I was really like, oh, this is just how we're going to go. And so for a moment, this is what was really weird about it for about 10 minutes. Of that, once we got past the opening and we were in this new tone, I was like, oh, maybe we should watch this with the kids. Like, I was actually thinking about pausing this and being like, well, I mean, this isn't a film that I think I'm going to like all that much. But, yeah. you know, at least if I'm going to waste the time watching this to review it, maybe I can just watch it with my kids because it literally felt like a kid's movie. It was very, It, yeah. it felt like the Spirit Halloween movie. Yeah, it felt like, it like did. something like that it where I'm like, like okay, I'll just throw the Hubie Halloween or something. Where I was like, I'll just throw this on for the kids when they get here. And then somebody was like, you know, threw out the F word. And then it happened again. And yeah. then they were talking about, like, having sex and yes. this. And I was like, It's so weird. What? It kind of felt like, so the actors themselves, I mean, they are, like, I think they say they're, they're 18. Like, they graduated, or even 17, because they graduated right. the high school. girls in this movie look like they're 14. Like a month ago. Like that's what they say yeah. in the film. So yeah. they're like right out of high school. Yeah. But um they it kind of felt like somebody writing like kids, like teens that doesn't really know what teens are like. Cause we've watched movies with like that are geared towards like a you know, that have like primarily like a younger cast and like they're using like um bodies, 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 I feel like is a good example of that. Where it's like they're using like certain slang and there's like mannerisms and stuff that are very like clearly of like the of the times. Yeah. But it felt like it feels authentic. It feels a little bit more like, okay, like people are involved in this that are closer to that age range. So like, or, they you know, get they get it. This yeah. kind of felt like, and it is, I know we keep going back to the Disney channel thing, but it's what it's like where it's like the Disney channel, like you would watch things and it would be like kids your age or a little older and like they're trying to act cool and trendy, but it's like they're not really doing any of the trends, you it's, know, that you would see like in your school. It's like 90s Disney movies that tried to appeal to like the more urban black culture by mm. making like rapping cows. Yeah. Like it just, <laughs> you're like, who's this landing felt, with? It, this it just feels just, racist. And, yeah. And then when they're <laughs> talking about like sex and stuff, it's supposed to be like there's a big part of it where they're like, I'm not giving spoilers away, but there's like some like adult like sexual stuff that is spoilers. Like it's messed up what they say happens. And it just was so weird and like I don't know. I I just did not like it. I feel like it was oh, no, this misplaced. Is, this is a genuinely terrible movie. Like this film would have done better if it actually had been geared towards kids. Like if it had just yeah. stuck with that, yeah. I think that it could have been a family friendly film and 
you know, there, if they had obviously in this case, you would want to cut out some of the gore because there is a little bit of violence, um, nothing like super crazy. Yeah, but like gore. if they toned down on it, so, it yeah. could totally be like a family friendly film. And I think it would have been better suited in that light um, versus trying to make it R just to throw in like those F words and have a little bit of talk about sex and then some of the violence. Um, yeah. I mean, this movie would fall in line with like the R.L. Stein yeah. haunting hour movies, like the Carnival or Cabinet of Souls or whatever, yeah. and, and uh, Monster Absolutely. Bill and stuff that my kids used to watch. And that's what age these kids, like they look, which I guess they are like perfectly cast for their age. But this it was is, so no, weird. they are not. This is one of the rare examples to me in horror. This is this is the exact opposite problem that I've had in in the past with movies like this. This is the this is one of the, if the only exception I can think of off the top of my head, it ever that I can think of right now, where I'm actually saying the the people who are cast as the like 18 year olds in a horror movie are actually cast too young yeah it's always like 30 year olds playing high school students and this one it feels like 14 year olds yeah. playing 18 year olds they maybe look. not the guys as much but the girls look so young they like do. the blonde girl she seriously looked i know 13 14 she i mean was... maybe i'm just getting that old where an 18 year old looks that young but i would be surprised <laughs> if that girl was 18. i would be pretty surprised i would say 16 at oldest that that honestly i don't give a shit about that she can be 12. It, it doesn't really matter i don't really care it's it's just how poor the dialogue yeah. the tone now there are oh there are moments right so we when we do enter the other dimension which they get to in this there's this like red lighting almost mm -hmm. like very uh, Suspiria esque in certain shots. The whole the outside world. There's like a there's something going on in the sky. the the way the the way the villain moves and looks in those yeah. scenes is actually pretty cool. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god! Like we were watching, we we're probably at 45 minutes, an hour in, some are 45 minutes in, and I was just like, oh, this scene right here. Yeah. This is actually pretty cool. Yeah. Right here, this one moment for about 10, 20 seconds. Yeah. I like this. Right? And then just almost every single thing else. The characters, the, the way they interact with each other, all of that. Just, oh my god, the scene where the kid goes to get the salt from the restaurant. <laughs> the, it's so just, bad. It's so laughably bad. Oh. It, it really is one of the worst films of the year. Yeah. Just because of the opening and and the one scene in, in the other dimension, though. Yeah. This is leagues better than Skin of a Rink for me because sure, I know I people love that. That's going to be like number one for a lot of people. I know. I literally couldn't hate a film more. Yeah. I still like that. I mean, obviously things happen in this film as like asinine and confusing as they are. At least there's stuff going on versus in Skin of a Rink. Like I just, nothing's happening. Childish um, nightmares is why everyone loves that movie I, supposedly. And that's, I, whatever. I, whatever. Like it's fine, but. This one was really bad, and it was a pretty big waste of time, so it's, like, not a recommendation oh, God. at all. No. And it is kind of shocking to find out that the same director did Glorious, but um, cause that movie is really rad. That movie's awesome. What I would recommend for anyone who's even slightly curious, uh, just because they're like, I got to see what he's talking about, or what she's talking about, throw it on, watch the opening, which is going to be this, like, total normal dark horror tone, where this girl's playing the thing and she gets, you know, taken, whatever. And then watch the change into like, honey, I shrunk the kids. Yeah. Like for just a couple minutes and then just be like, that's the rest of the film. Yeah. Outside of the one in the other dimension scene. That's cool for a very short amount of time. But the whole rest of the movie is like that Disney Channel kind of feel. Yeah. But with a bunch of F words and sexual assault. It's weird. It's so bad. <laughs> Com just terrible. Just yeah. genuinely terrible film. So that's it. Uh, this is going to get a really, really low um, letterbox for me. It's like a, this is like a like one a or point a point five. five. Yeah, this probably. Is, this is crazy bad. Yeah. 
shocker. I was actually, if you watch the the um, the video I made of like upcoming releases, you're excited for it. I was like stoked, I but I didn't see a trailer. Too. I'd be curious on a trailer. Because... I thought we saw like a tiny clip of a trailer or something. No, not me. I maybe not. I don't know, but yeah. I I liked the idea because I'm a huge fan of the creepy pastas. Yeah. But I feel like it's hard. I feel like there's so like not many no. that are done well, and it bums me out because there's like so much content online for like creepy pastas that could be adapted. Like what was that other one that we watched that was like kind of creepy pasta s that was um like <laughs> it looked like it was like the phone thing. Do you remember what that one was? Maybe. At Kit Cuddy cut Oh Grim Cuddy. Grim Cuddy. On Hulu. That one was better than this. Um, and that <laughs> one was, was like marginally better. But like, that's another one where I'm like, I don't get it. I don't know why it's that, you know, I don't know why the directors and writers are struggling because I think that it's there's hard to make good lot. movies for sure. I know it's hard to make good movies, but I but just think that it's not hard to make a movie better than this. Yeah, there's a lot of inspiration out there, and I want to see better. More Channel Zero. Yeah. All right. That's it. Bye. Bye.